Welcome back to Nerdopolitan. Today we have a great, amazing guest. Her name is Kuyen No, and she's an actor, organizer, trainer, and we're going to have a great conversation about uh, freedom of speech, internet, and a little bit of what she's doing in her life right now. She has uh, amazing projects, uh, received an amazing nomination. She's really, <laughs> she's really happy about. So please, uh, Kuyen, tell us about the recent work with... Um, the mountain sings. Uh, sure, sure. Hello. Um, good to be here. So uh, The Mountain Sing is an audiobook that I narrated. It's the debut English novel of author Nguyen Phan Kue Mai. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said it because I, I, probably, I probably wouldn't have been able to say that. Um, yeah, so, uh, and in Vietnamese, you say like sister. So I call her Ti Kue Mai. Um, Ti Kue Mai is... Uh, an author and a poet, and she's written a ton of incredible work, but this is her very first English novel. Um, and on top of getting amazing acclaim and accolades, just, you know, uh, just amazing reviews uh, from people who have read it, um, I had the opportunity to narrate it. And then we just found out a few days ago that it was nominated for an Audi Award, which people call like the Oscars of audiobooks. <laughs> um, uh, it was nominated for Audiobook of the Year. That's amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, what? And you're the voice. And I'm the voice. That's great. Yeah. Well, listen to that voice, guys. <laughs> yeah, crazy it's stuff. It's uh, nominated to the Oscar of audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so how, how do you, how do you uh, get this job? Yeah, um, so it was a really special, kind of unbelievable thing that happened. Um, I I work with Dion Audio, uh, so they have listings of all different uh, voices, narrators, and um, the publisher of this audiobook, uh, Dreamscape, they uh, looked through and they passed over different voices for the, I believe it's the editor and the, the author herself to look over. I think she probably looked through and listened through um, um, with other people. I just don't know who. Um, and she, the way, once the first time I spoke with her, she told me that she listened through all of the voices, all of the options. And then she turned to her, I believe it's her editor. And she just said, oh, this is, this is the person that I'd like to narrate the book. So the funny story is I received an email from the, from the audiobook people, but their email address got flagged as spam in my email inbox. Oh, you almost missed an, uh, I mean, how'd you, how'd you find the, Dude, how'd you find the a, Oh my gosh. Uh, it was flagged as spam in my inbox yeah. and it was also the Christmas season. So, I'm already, I, I'm already not really, you, you know, like it was literally just something like December 20th. So I'm not as active on email. I'm not going through my spam. And then one day I get a follow on Twitter from the author and she, and I, I follow her back because I recognize her name, but I, here's why I recognize her name because she's a famous poet and author. Yeah. So I actually translated her poetry five years before that. You're so already a fan. I was already a fan. You already worked with, with her, with her work. I didn't, yeah, I worked with her work, but I never worked with her. Yeah. So then I saw it and I'm like, oh my gosh, she saw my audio from five years ago. This is amazing. I thought she was just reaching, like she found me because of that. Yeah. So then I add her and then of course I message her because I'm like, oh, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you for following. And then she goes, Gwen. Have you received email from my publisher? And I'm super confused <laughs> because I'm not making any of the connections. And then I go back. Oh, no. So then I'm, I ask her, like, what do you mean? Do you know that I translated your work? And she goes, huh? Like, what? No, I'm I'm talking about my book, my book. I want you to narrate my book. Ah. And then uh, <laughs> I go into my email inbox yeah. and I see it. And I missed it from like, you know, I don't know, like a week or two weeks before. So I, I respond to her, I'm like, oh my God, it would be an honor. This would be so wonderful. Uh, let me email back. And so the rest, the rest is history. But the point of that whole story is that she had no idea 
that I knew of her work. Yeah. And it was just the universe. Imagine that, like, uh, you're, you're a big fan, say, like, of Scorsese, and then he starts following you. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that, like, similar to what it's, you felt? It's like that, except then also that Scorsese says, hey, do you want to direct my or do you want to co-direct my or you know do you want to yeah. act in my next film it's yeah. like that it's did you did you get the email you're, you're in my did movie did you get the yeah 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 <laughs> we sent you a contract <laughs> yeah so that's how that happened um and it all happened super fast so i agreed to it and within a month i was in the studio uh recording for how long day. how long did it take to record the whole book it took uh i believe all uh, like a week and some days um and then the final audio is uh 10.4 hours so you know uh, so everything's in english and everything is in english but it's um but she's obviously she's vietnamese and so she writes a lot of vietnamese phrases um uh and she incorporates all of these proverbs like the Vietnamese language has so many proverbs so she incorporates a lot of proverbs and um the names of all the characters are Vietnamese and so that's one thing that a lot of people say is that oh I have no idea how to pronounce these things and then I listen to the audiobook and then yeah and um with with the book did you have to read the the Vietnamese parts in English and in Spanish in uh, Spanish <laughs> <laughs> In Vietnamese. In, 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 in Vietnamese? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, no, it's uh, the way she wrote it. She would write something like, um, um, and then I took a look at the sun ca, uh, and then she explains what that is in English. So yeah. it's not it's not a in Vietnamese and then English. Yeah. It's, she truly incorporates, um, the, I was about to say Spanish. You know, <laughs> she, she truly incorporates the Vietnamese phrases. Yeah into the into the book with yeah. without doing like Vietnamese English Vietnamese English I, I guess for some people it might be confusing which is why there's an audio book do you yeah. also have to like uh, use your your background as an actor to give emotion to the characters when they when they like interpret their their dialogue or yeah 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 if how you, is that like if you listen to the audio like some of the yeah. audio book it's Um, first of all, it's a story, it's a Vietnamese story and a Vietnamese story is going to be very painful. Like any story about Vietnamese history is painful. Yeah. There are nice parts, but there's going to be blood, tears, and lots death. Lots of tears. Yeah. yeah. And so a lots of tragedy. Yeah. And so it's not, it's, and it's, and the wonderful thing about the book is that it's not just a war story. It's. She tells about the eras before she told tell the pre-war era yeah. and generations um, before that. And it gives so much context to the Vietnamese story. Um, but the reason why I'm saying this is like you can't like uh, I'll, I'll just like say a phrase from the book is like, um, which is like kill that American soldier, kill him, kill him now, you know, oh, that sounds But, great. <laughs> you know? And so it's like. You can't not, you know, there's only one way to read that. It's like, you can't say that. You have to read it with all of the characterization yeah. that it's that is written into the story. Um, and, you know, it's like I said, it's a war story. So there's there. It's not just a war story, but it's also a war story. So there's death and crying. And so. I have Did to. Did you cry for real while you were reading it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have like, the behind the scenes somewhere? No, but you can hear it when you, you listen it? to it. You, you can you, hear your tears drop? You can hear the snot coming out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like... <laughs> that's amazing. Well, no wonder you got a nomination. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess that must have been. One I just like wish I could like see it also. Like if there was a behind the scenes, or maybe they should, they should adapt it to a movie, and you should do the the part, like one of the parts. <laughs> Is there a part you you were interpreting? If, if it were a film, oh, you, that would be the dream. I mean, uh, th so it's a, a a book, a story told in two perspectives and yeah. two eras. So the grandma and the granddaughter. Yeah. Um, and you see both characters age. Um, so yeah, there would be something there for sure. Um, something in your range. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can interpret like the, the little girl with good makeup and then yeah. the grandma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, awesome. All the, the full yeah, spectrum. Well, yeah. I mean. 
<laughs> I've seen other actors do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, tell us about the, the, the nomination. You said that there's like other, what, what other people or what other uh, artists are nominated for like a book like this? Yeah. There, so, author you, audiobook of. Yeah, who, who are you competing with? <laughs> who, who are you? Huh? Who am I competing with? Yeah, Lord. To, to win the prize. Kevin Hart. Literally. Kevin Hart? Yeah. 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 So Wow, you might you might even get to meet him, right? Yeah, but then it's the awards are online this year. Because ah, of COVID. Damn COVID. Uh, yeah. Otherwise yeah. we may be at, you know, the same gala together. Yeah. Um <laughs> So what's, uh, what's it's Kevin, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's a comedy, right? Or, yeah, no, it's his uh it's his like autobiography. Or uh, he he has multiple books. Yeah. Apparently his book is really good. If you want to check it out, my my older brother loves it, um, and it's a book that you know it's a story about his life and he narrates it. Mm. So that's why this nomination is really crazy because uh, there's there are all these people who write. I'm sure they're amazing stories, their life stories, and um, it's not only that, but that's that's uh, the other nominee is Alicia Keys. Alicia uh, Keys, wow. And it's yeah. I, I I haven't looked into it, but I believe it's a story probably about her her, her life. Her, yeah, her life. life. Yeah. And then there's another book um, by uh, um, a congressman uh, Elijah Cummings and Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is one of the, oh is one of the narrators. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Um, yeah, I, I forget who the uh, the third person who narrated it is. And then there's another book, and uh, I don't know if you know of the actor. He's a huge actor, but Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah, and he's <laughs> I just saw him last night in a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's that's what I mean. That's why it's a joke, you know. It's like I don't know if you've heard of Kevin Hart, you know. It's like so Chiwetel Ejiofor is my other. The person that I got that I have the honor of being nominated alongside, so you you feel me right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's no, definitely, it's amazing. Congratulations again. Thank you. Sound, I mean, I'm happy. I'm honored to meet you. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so. it's great. It's great. Well, who who do you think would direct the the, the film? <laughs> that I have. Who do you think should direct it? I don't know. I really who, who don't. Who would you like say? Oh, maybe Scorsese, but or what no, about like you uh, no, no, no. Paul Thomas Anderson? By the time that the film, if a film deal happens, um, I would hope that you could direct it. No, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, that a that a really special Vietnamese director could direct it. I mean, how amazing would that be, right? That would be great, yeah. It, it could re replace all of the apocalypse nows of the past. It would be a truly, truly Vietnamese story. Is this is this a non-fiction or is this fiction? It's fiction. It's fiction. Yeah, it's fiction, but if you... It's fiction, but it's really it's based... It's, it's grounded on, on, on... Grounded on actual events, yeah. like, on, on facts, yeah. like how things were. Every single historical moment that is written about in the book is real, uh, is is what really happened in history. Um, so like I said, it's all of the events that happened uh, in the pre-war era, as well as during the war. Um, and maybe the, the characters are not real characters, but they are real characters. Yeah. 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 So you, you also mentioned like there's a, a Twitter by the author about uh, reconciliation uh how, do, how what does that mean yeah it's funny because the word reconciliation in for vietnamese people is a really complicated concept mm -hmm. and for people who fled the country after the war it's for some of them it's a really um it's a controversial word um but nonetheless i really understand the heart of what many people mean when they say reconciliation. Maybe it's not the same if you have a member of a government saying like, we are supporting reconciliation, right? Yeah. Because then you, they you say that, them. but then they'll still tell yeah. the story of- You can't believe the government. <laughs> Anywhere. Or, or government officials, any, any type of government. <laughs> Whether it's uh, capitalist or communist, you can't believe them. <laughs> And that's and, the, if they say that we want reconciliation, they really mean we want to screw you. Yeah, 
right? Yeah. We, <laughs> so that, so as you can imagine, after the war, all of the losers of the war who fled yeah. the country, like when they hear that word, it's really painful. It's right? hard to, it's, it's hard to believe. Yeah. And, but the author, uh, she tweeted, uh, I think it was just yesterday or the day before. And she said that this book is an act of reconciliation because she has members of her family that fought um, against members of my family. And she mentioned, she says, my narrator, you know, Kuyen Ngo had family members who uh, my family members were fighting against in the war. That is crazy. Yeah. And she said, we could be enemies, but instead we came together to tell this story. That's actually, that, that is a reconciliation. It's a, uh, uh, I think it's important for people to, uh, in order to achieve a, a peace process, you have to uh, talk, um, find the truths that are hidden by m many uh, war crimes and really sit down and talk and, and, and try to find like, uh, you know, common grounds where you can express yourselves. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I think it's beautiful that you, you got to work with this author. Yeah. And also because the book itself, because it tells, it just tells his, it tells, it's, it's a work of fiction, but it just tells pieces of what happened. So you can't tell a story about, I mean, in the case of her, I mean, I think it's one of the most uh, masterful things she does is that she weaves in um, all of the contradictions of this time in, in Vietnam. Uh, she taught, she, she is able to weave in the stories of betrayal within families. You know, like when, I don't know about like for you and, and your friends and family, when they think of the word Vietnam, you know, everybody thinks of the war, right? Yeah. And here in America, but not only in America, I know many different places around the world, they, they it's, it's very like, in, it's very instantaneous where they're like, oh, it's, it, this is what happens. And then, that America was there and blah, 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 you know, and then all of the narratives um, can be simplified. And what happens in this book is that she just breathes in all of the complexity that how did brothers end up fighting against each other? How did you have children calling their par parents traitors? Mm or forsaking them. It's a really common thing. And, and it's tragic. And, yeah. it's, like a, it's, a, it's a tragedy that you see in many civil wars, just yeah. bro uh, brothers fighting each other, families tor torn apart by uh, e ideology. Yeah. That, I mean, it's just, um, you can see it now, like with a polarized government, with polarized views, like we, we see it today with, uh, you know, Trump supporters, uh, uh, liberals, like they, 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 they don't see it, that they have a common ground they should be fighting for instead of letting letting themselves being uh, led into like a, a very polarized sense of uh, you know what what should happen. Yeah, I think it's uh, if people like work on at the minimum common common denominator, they'll they'll find the common ground where they can work together instead of um, let let themselves be manip manipulated by little. Little triggers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's really what the era of... Is that still going on in, in Vietnam? Yeah, I mean, it's going... I mean, you know it's going on in Vietnam. It's going on in Everywhere. Colombia. It's going whole... on in... Yeah. It's going... I mean, it's, and it's only worse, right? Like, it's really, really bad. And we're in a particular time in the world where it's very, very bad. And so, of course, it's happening in, in Vietnam. And I think that uh, it's really bad everywhere. And then in each context, we're dealing with different monsters right we're dealing with uh um com complex issues that impact how information is received uh among citizens of a of a country and so the context of vietnam ha carries with it its set of burdens which obviously the the war has a lot to to do with um but you know like you were saying that's kind of just the environment that we are in now a hyper polarized environment um yeah and so I, I really do think we've hit a point where it is a issue among it's, it's an issue that we all have to figure out how to begin to resolve um and i'm you know i'm that's something that i'm very interested in and i want to work on and i want to um i believe you know you you said that it's 
you said that it is it is an act of reconciliation. And one of the things I kept on thinking while I was in the studio was thinking about like, wow, it's how can I get people to read this? Because this book is about that, that what you're talking about, like it's about healing, because once you go so deeply into both sides of a story, like let's just say in the case of Trump supporters, right? Yeah. Once you go so deep into those perspectives, yeah. there's, there's hard, really it's hard, no- It's hard to go back, right? Yeah, and there's no, and there's also no point in just saying like, you're disgusting, you know, like yeah. you are a Biden supporter. You want to turn the country into a communist hellscape. But there's also no point in saying like, you're a Trump supporter, you are a despicable human being, uh, you know, and then, and if you ever listen to Trump supporters, like that's one of the things that they get, you know, you mentioned triggers, like yeah. they get very triggered if somebody says, oh, you're a Trump supporter, that means you're a racist. It, yeah. That means you're racist, yeah. right? So I really think like that's, you know, sorry to jump around, but I, while I was reading the book, like that's, she goes so deeply into a into scenarios where North Vietnamese, so um, in at different eras, it was different groups. She tells um, a story from the two points of view. Yeah, she tells a story. She tells. I think that's important. Yeah, that's yeah, why it's a reconciliation. Yeah, 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 exactly. And 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 she doesn't necessarily like she. The book is not like a South Vietnam soldier and a North Vietnam soldier. It's the people who get caught in the crossfires of a war. And of course, that means that you do pick up, you do pick sides. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where all of us are constantly, right? Like yeah. there's the the wars that governments wage on each other. And then in right now, when it comes to our political polarization, it's the wars that we wage on each other. Like, uh, you know, it's sad because then you have this amazing piece of work by a Vietnamese author and then you look at Vietnamese families today and we're polarized as hell. I know people, so many people, You, I know so many people who have forsaken their uh, brothers and sisters in the past, in the past, particularly in the past year. Mm -hmm. um, so it certainly can teach us something about healing, but I think we have a ton, a ton of work to do. Definitely, the, there's lots of work to do and I think the main thing is, or the, the positive thing about this type of work, and I think that everybody should try and, 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 and do this, is just have conversations. Like, don't shut people out. Don't um, use, uh, like, st stereotypes. Stereotypes like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're a Trump supporter. You're stupid. You know, yeah. that don't uh, go back to that because that's the, that's the easy thing. That's, the, you know, like, that just uh, buys into the polarization and, and that just makes the, uh, having uh advancing in the conversation easier yeah so i, I think the the key thing is okay um just like having conversations and telling you know like why you know actually making a point with facts why do you think a certain person is in, in the wrong yeah i will say though that with the era of i mean i don't know how much you look into QAnon and, and yeah. all, you know. I did I, some research on it. Yeah. <laughs> I I will say that I am, I love the idea of exchange of knowledge, perspectives, and um, difficult conversations. Um, yeah. But I, I will say that in the last few weeks, yeah. in the last two months, yeah. I've observed, um, I've observed like the, the deepening of the rifts, right? And then, then you have a situation where uh, uh, big tech shut down, it shut down the parlor and parlor and, uh, and, and Trump's account. Yeah. And then, and then it gives, you know, it kind of fuels, it fuels some, it fuels those flames. And then it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, it, 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 it fueled the, the, the Trump story that the, the fake news and the big media is out together. It, it, just, it just made it, yeah. you know, like, oh yeah, look, it's true. Yeah. But then at the same, and then, and then I, I'm not a huge fan of what they say. Uh, like I, or I'm not a huge fan. Of, no, it's not even, I, I'm not a huge fan of like the technocracy, you know, controlling uh, our, what we see, what we hear and what we do. Right. It's something, it's something to worry about in the future. Like, uh, okay. How, how much power should they have? 
because um, you know Twitter and, and Facebook they're like uh, they're giants yeah, right now, yeah, and, yeah. and and they control more what people see than TV. Yeah, He's, totally. And then on the other end, though, so I, I I don't know again, like I don't know how much you dig in, or I don't know how many of your friends are really staunch uh, tr- Trump supporters, or you know. Um, but I watched as all of that was happening, and I watched what was happening to the people who are against the, that, you know, against the that side, against the Democrats. And it has gotten it's gotten so much worse. And actually, I was thinking about reaching out to one of the guys. I, I don't know if you would you know, ever do something like this. But I was thinking about reaching out to one of the guys because he, uh, you know, like when you have a following as a Trump supporter, yeah. you want to, con- you want, you, you want to sound like you're being attacked. Yeah. Um, and that's what more, most Trump supporters sound like actually. Yeah. Not to so being persecuted. Yeah. And I've watched one of uh, an acquaintance of mine Mm -hmm. who's a close friend of another close friend. And he has gotten, we're talking every week, like thousands of new followers. And he uh, was there on the day of that they stormed the The Capitol. Capitol, And he tells a narrative that it was all, that it was all paid actors that did that. All those guys were paid actors? And I, I don't, yeah, I don't but, buy into that. Yeah, yeah, but but if you know, but then he says, then he'll say, well, what do, what news do you read? Why don't you believe? You know, and, yeah. and, and but then he believes that he believes that, and so he actually posted a photo of all of the international com- the 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 very diverse community of Trump supporters, and yeah. saying like, what happened on that day was just an attempt to to tarnish a beautiful movement happening for the people. Like, they blame the, the, it on, on Antifa too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they play, they blame it on Antifa and they say, um, look at how beautiful, like I was there. He, kept on, he keeps on saying like, I was there and it was so beautiful. Like we were together and we're united and we were peaceful and other like bad actors, Antifa, Black Lives Matter was in there to, to screw it up. Yeah. And then now we're being shut down by tech. And here's the thing, like if, somehow this what i'm saying gets to people who are in that boat like i i was really open to talking yeah. you know because he was saying like can't we just talk can't we just we have to respect each other's perspectives yeah, yeah. but then a few days later he i noticed his as each day passes his videos become more sensational yeah and 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 also a really um vitriolic you know they uh when when AOC posted the video of talking about her experience, he posted a mock mockery video. And it's like, I don't really care what your politics are, but you just said that we have to respect each other and love each other and hear each other. And then the next day he posts a, like a mocking video, like a, yeah. just, and using like very, you know, sexist yeah. language. And he doesn't see anything wrong with that. There's a double standard. Yeah. And so how do you fight that? You know, like, because they feel, they feel attacked yeah. and they call for respect and understanding. Yeah. That's usually, that's, that's in the uh, Republican playbook is that, that, that same exact thing. Like, uh, oh, it's, it's terrible that uh, Colin Kaepernick uses, uh, you know, he kneels down, but then they don't see nothing wrong with uh, protesting at the Capitol. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, it's, uh, it's, I... I think we, the, the yeah. best thing we could do is just like warn people like, hey, look, if you um, you're, if you're a diehard Trump supporter or if you're a diehard Hillary Clinton supporter, <laughs> you're probably being manipulated. Yeah. You're, being, yeah. you're being heavily manipulated. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to do a test and say that to the Trump and Hillary lovers in our lives and see how Let's well they Let's just say it and run. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be received well. Let's say it and I, run. Let's say it yeah. and run. And then like, they're, they're, you're like, all they can do is just like check themselves. Yeah. One of the things that... The, check one, yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> one of the things that 
bothered me the most in the last year is all of a sudden I had to become like uh, comrades with people whose politics, like liberals, for or you know centrists, whose whose a lot of a lot of their political opinions I don't even particularly agree with, and then now we have to be on the same side because the what's happening is so horrible that you yeah. have to fight against it. But then you know, and then I guess things haven't really changed. Things haven't changed that much. We're really in a s situation where we're gonna have to continue fighting. Like it's is uh, lots of I have heard lots of people say it, but like just because Trump didn't win the election doesn't like all of these guys are like I said it wasn't it wasn't before the election that this acquaintance of mine got all of these followers yeah. he's been getting them every day since yeah. since the uh since the inauguration um and he's um he's partnering with uh, other conservative voices who feel like they're being attacked uh -oh. yeah so so it's like new, Newsmax material? Uh, yeah, I mean, and then he'll, and yeah, again, like he's only getting more followers. It's not like he's getting less. And uh, I, anyway, I, I don't, what do you think about that? Like inviting that conversation, you know, cause you said that you, you like conversation, you know, yeah, you I think uh, definitely, support conversation. Uh, we, we should have a conversation. We should talk with, um, with people that have uh, opposing views. Uh, cause there's, a, a, a common ground that we can achieve. Like say, for example, uh, with Trump supporters, they probably don't like the abortion. You know, they think that killing, killing, uh, the fetus is wrong, but then leaving abandoned the, the, the child is okay. Uh, not giving uh, proper health care to citizens is wrong because it's communism. But, um, you know, like not uh, not planning or not uh they're just like being manipulated with a, a little triggers little parts of um of a, the same routine that that they, they 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 fall into that just like uh we have to like talk to them in a sense that for example okay let's put abortion off the table right now let's not talk, go into that subject but let's talk about like a minimum wage or do you agree with that yeah like 15 dollars. yeah i can agree with that okay yeah. let's, let's 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 go to the next step uh try to convince them like okay why uh universal health health care is um is the right thing to do because um you're paying the you're paying the you're paying the, the, the money that you're paying is going to uh the billionaires why not just give that to 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 the hospitals so they can treat people better yeah yeah right yeah you're gonna pay the same thing anyway Take the middleman mafia out, and just you know, yeah, give that give that uh, money to hospitals. And if you try to make them see that they, they you know they might you know that actually makes sense. They might actually see some sense into that. Um, and it's not it's not communism. It's just like you know like uh, all the all the major free market countries have uh, universal health health care, like uh, Canada, France, Germany. So, and it and it, it actually is. It is uh, um, a subject that some Republicans do agree with. Yeah, yeah. It, it is it, popular. It, yeah. Uh, but then I think one of the things that's really unfortunate is that, you know, as you know, our political system is built in a way where money, money still controls so much. So yeah. even though the average person that really needs health care, <laughs> you know, um, can get behind those ideas. Yeah. But then you have the issue that, there's a lot of people who will say, and they'll have their own reasons, right? And then, but then the thing is, they have, they have the ability to uh, sway what it is that actually happens. Um, and the, the 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 reason I mentioned earlier that the last year and the last four years was really, in a way, it's um, set set us back. And then, especially, and also even in my life, um, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends with diverse political perspectives, yeah. even if they're, mm, you know, let's just say a lot of them are relatively progressive, right? But even among those people, they're, you know, you're saying these things and you're like, duh, basic rights. It sounds but, it's but like, like a human uh, right. Yeah, but sounds... a lot of people who are upwardly mobile, who who are, you know, and, and they're not even rich, right? They're not, yeah. but they're, let's just, let's just say they're, they're upwardly mobile and they're doing all right for themselves. And they really, really believe in the system, this 
hyper bureaucratic system that we have. Um, if you say those things, they, they will say to you, it's not that simple. Yeah. It's a lot it's a lot more complex than that. Or if you say yeah. like they why don't do we... understand it and they say, Oh, it's more complicated than that. Yeah. And then if you say like, why do we spend so much on the military? They'll be like, Well, you don't understand like the way that that yeah. works. So that's why our government is the way that's why America. They'll say the... something like, uh, the best defense is offense or something like that. So the so being there, yeah. Yeah. So that's why, you know, and that's why it's really hard to undo. It's it's easy to say it, but it's really really hard to challenge and undo the way that we, uh, the people in our lives and in this society, uh, thinks about these things. Because, for example, Obama. Obama is a really difficult figure to talk about, and yet in a lot of circles, he's not hard to talk about at all because everybody loves Obama, right? But not people at Flint. Yeah. Did you see that uh, that uh, stunt that he pulled with uh, the water? Oh no no no. Oh, you just show show that to everybody, and, and you know the the then, Obama no. Obama approval rating will go down. I, I don't so know. So he, he went to Flint, and you know, like the, the water's poison, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he said it's not poison. He drank a, a glass of water, and people were like he, he you know, they, they were they were cheering him because he came to like they, they were expecting him to solve their problems, and all he did was just like approve of the. Um, of what the, the the local authorities did with when the, did when did this happen? I didn't. How come I this, don't know uh, happened about? before he came, came out of office? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the videos on the internet. Okay, okay. YouTube, yeah, check gonna, out the water. Play. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, it's right there. That's the guy. He's drink, that's the that's Flint water, and he just drinks like a little sip. He doesn't even like swallow it. Yeah, yeah. But so what? I, the, but you know that, that's what I'm saying. Like um, even yesterday, I was talking to uh, a really really like beloved old friend. Um, who does amazing work and and she was just proclaiming about her her love of Obama and honestly like if anybody in my life ends up listening to what I'm saying they're gonna be oh my god why is she and I'm not saying I'm not saying like oh my god you're, I'm not saying you're you're a horrible human being for loving oh. Obama but I'm just saying that the system that we have right now you're, you're saying is, that she's yeah. probably being manipulated no 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 you know, and by the way I was gonna say earlier too when you were like you're probably being manipulated I'm like you know what people really don't like being told that they're being manipulated <laughs> Um, but you know, like the topic of Obama, like it should, we should live in a, in a way where it's not that difficult to recognize all of the amazing things about Obama. Uh, yeah, he you know, some good things. he did some good things. And then also just talk bad about things. all of the bad things that he's done and all of the bad things that will continue in also in this era. Right. In, in the, 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 in, the thing is that, um, people have to understand that they, they have to hold politicians accountable and that they're they're human beings that that uh make mistakes yeah so what what should we do like okay make them pay for their mistakes or uh, hold them accountable just like hold them accountable like look you did this you, you drank water from uh you know that was poison you were supposed to help them like with uh just take take a little bit out of the um spend uh, you know military spending and use it for for flint yeah, yeah. right it is a, a fraction of what, you know, like they give uh, the Pentagon would have solved their problems. Yeah. One of the things that I find really. But, but socialism is bad. So, so now you exactly. Can't. One of the things that I find really challenging about making these arguments within the current system that we have is that people, um, until we change the way that we live, uh, the way that we engage, not just with our elected officials and the voting system until we adjust the way that we live, um, you know, basically not prioritize our conveniences, not prioritize our, uh, and, and, and you know, once it's, once you've got, gotten your conveniences, then you, then you get a move over to your luxuries, right? What we have to adjust the way that we look at those things and be okay with discomfort and everything um you know not getting your amazon package within two days like once we have to adjust those things before we can shift the political system because you know you mentioned accountability accountability my friends don't even read who's running for about who's running for office like yeah. hold your politicians accountable we don't even think about who we're putting into office let alone once they're in office, like yeah. holding them because we don't have that. It's not built into the way that we live. 
Um, yeah. You know, I, 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 this really hit me a few, I think a few years ago in LA, I was driving um, near here, near downtown, and I saw these signs for local, um, lo local uh, elections. And I was just like, who the hell in this neighborhood is reading about the people yeah. on these signs? Yeah. It's a joke, right? And then whoever, you know, and luckily in the last election, because of how dire things were. Yeah. There People was a, more there was involved. more yeah grassroots started to really yeah. to thrive but which is great because we had to get to this point for people to actually start to really engage yeah. but then the fear about the whole the fear of many uh surrounding the Biden administration is um that people will fall back into their complacency right well and, st and, and thanks to Biden too cuz like he you know he 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 got elected with lots of promises but um the first thing he does is like fall back on the two thousand dollar check. <laughs> yeah. Like he calls it like no, uh, uh, one thousand four hundred is okay, <laughs> right? Yeah, and you have to take it. And uh, the the next thing, uh, he bombs Syria. Oh, okay, so it's more of the same. And then people like uh, you know, they fall into apathy and yeah, and that's why and you know they, they, they just think no, nothing's gonna change. But I think this is where people have to uh, push him in harder, and the people that supported Biden have to you know like hey. We didn't. We didn't elect you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that's where people have to, you know, like, hold their ground. Yeah. And that's where they have to hold them accountable. Yeah. Well, yeah. One of the things that I uh, wanted to say uh, after the election and never had a chance to say because it takes a lot of words and energy in order to package something that uh, people can hear and resonate with was that, you know, for example, the way that all of the grassroots organizers, we owe them. We owe them for the, the election, right? Yeah. The, uh, the work of all of those organizers in Georgia. Yeah, um, all those people got Biden elected. Yeah, all of those people. It's not, it's not any, you know, uh, I think Biden and- And he's betraying I think, them. I think Biden and Harris ended up getting time people of the year. Yeah. What you, you for, know, not, for not doing the same thing the, the same way Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize just for winning? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so then it's just a publicity stunt. Yeah, and so then uh, one of the things that I I wanted to say is like you now you're all excited because black folks are rolling out and doing this work. People whose votes you didn't even you knew like people know about voter suppression, but yeah. only until it's like, oh shit, we're gonna get Trump. You know, Trump's gonna get elected again. And it's like, yeah. oh wow, thank you so much. Like you guys are so amazing. And then like two weeks later, oh, but fourteen dollar. You don't understand. Fourteen dollar checks is what. Uh, for, sorry, fourteen hundred dollar checks is. It's it's a political thing. You wouldn't understand, you know, like yeah. or or uh, even like in, um. They underestimate like, underestimate the people that elected them. Yeah, or like, and, and I'm not even talking about the elected officials. I'm talking about liberals. Like I'm talking yeah. about people who love our American democracy, who don't take the time on their regular days to challenge their thinking uh, surrounding our system. You know, these are people who make fun of Bernie. Yeah. These are people who make fun of Bernie, Bernie himself. They make fun of Bernie supporters. And it's like, guess what? The grassroots organizers that I, I, I went out to Arizona, but just for like, uh, just for very little. Um, and I, when I was there, I met all of these young people who helped turn Arizona blue. Yeah. Like, who do you think these people are? They're the ones with the ideas that you find so stupid and unrealistic, right? Yeah. And it's just like, no respect. Like, there's just no respect. Like, um, and I'm, so again, like, I'm not talking about any particular person, but I am saying that there's a ton of people, particularly those who are economically, um, like, upwardly mobile, yeah. who really look down on and speak in a way that is disrespectful to the people who are getting the work done. Yeah. They don't even think about the Native American or the indigenous community. But then when Navajo Nation rolls out to help turn Arizona blue, then it's like, wow, thank you so much. You've yeah. done such an amazing thing for our American democracy. Yeah, and then they betray, you know, like, just like uh, Biden, Biden could have changed so many things. Like, um, uh, he opened another uh, f facility for immigrant children to get, you know, jailed. Yeah. 
Um, so, you know, he could he could change so many things, but he just doesn't want to. Yeah. But, and, and you know, I have faith. I, I have faith that because things got so bad and organizing really started to shift um, in the last, the, the, in the the, last you, you know, know if, the, if there are any grassroots uh, people, thank you. And I hope you keep going beside, uh, despite the, the fact that, you know, the officials are kind of uh, betraying <laughs> What they keep, what they got elected for? Keep fighting the good fight. Keep fighting, fight. keep fighting. But you like. But uh, sorry, but no, everything in the, in the, sucks. In, yeah, no, they have to fight in the in the sense that you know try to turn some uh, Trump supporters, bring them from the dark side. You know, in the sense that you know um, the minimum wage. Uh, Republicans are at uh, popularity and are an all time low, and so are Democrats. So try to look for those candidates that really want to fight for for people. Yeah. That you that you you, you know re, do the research, uh, use your the scientific method, you know like uh, <laughs> you get you know, like that's the the that that's the best part is that when you listen to the people who are like sharing uh act, actively sharing uh fake uh, you know misinformation yeah um. They, they think they, 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 they think they, they're right. They, yeah, they'll say to you like, "No, you use the scientific." You use it. No, yeah. you have to watch news masks like like I do. Yeah, yeah, and those yeah. So uh, and and that's why I think that it's important for us to slowly shift the way that our political system works. But I also yeah. really really think that we need to shift the way that we live our lives, like day to day, and be okay with. Um, losing some of the conveniences that we have. And that's like one of the things that I think scares me the most because when I look at the people in my life, I recognize that it's really hard. It's much harder than, it's much easier said than done. Like to say, hey, sorry, in a true, in a, in a political system where we are all accountable to each other, it will require you to actually engage with your neighbors and your community. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about like, um, you know, what, what should people do so that their voices aren't um, just shut down? Like, uh, I because uh, it started with uh, banning Trump from Twitter, but now it's going to some socialist movements are being shut up. Um, some Antifa web pages are being pulled down. Yeah. What what's the next step for people to what should people do so that they're not their voices are, are heard? Yeah, I mean at the you know, we were just thanking grassroots organizers, honestly. Yeah. Like at this point So more like that, a, a mouth to mouth type of thing? I I, I think uh, it's more than just certainly like in, you know, all of these different mm, informal networks of communication are, are extremely important. But I also think just in general, like all of the organizing work that has to happen on the ground for us to shift the way that our uh, that our political system is being um, built. And our political system, when I say that, like all of the powers that are able to censor are included in that. Like everything is political, right? So um, I think that the grassroots organizing is one of those those things um yeah it's just that that has to happen in order for us to shift the way that we what, what would you recommend for like uh you know some young listener that's um channeling into this conversation what would you recommend that they do if they want to you know they're at home they, they they don't know anybody where should should they go who, do, who should they talk to if they want to participate more in this uh, gra grassroots movements uh who can they talk with yeah I, I think um that what can the, they find like a, you know like yeah a group I, yeah the amazing thing is like I'll, I'll give the example of how uh i ended up uh you know just going to arizona yeah. just for a little bit how did you go um, yeah why'd you go there because uh, i was who, who, I, took, who took you there oh i just went by myself like you went I, by yourself yeah, okay. yeah yeah you knew that something was going down no, it was just because, well, I Trump was about to, you know could potentially get elected in yeah. in in uh, two, you know two three days, and so I was like I I just don't I don't feel comfortable sitting at home yeah when I it's very close and I can go yeah. um and the and I think that's a good example because the organization I just came across because it's there on social media yeah 
and I saw them and then I looked at them and they said, hey, we still need people. And the actual election day is a really pivotal day for for right. an election. Like if you can get first time voters out, like it makes a huge difference, which is, by the way, what happened in Georgia. Right. Yeah. With with um, it turning blue. You had so many uh, voters who were previously uh, voters who had their their votes suppressed yeah. and they were able to be first time voters is an incredible thing. Um, and so I how did you find that? How did you find that Web page? It just that, like uh, I think. Did you Google it? it? No, 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 no. Uh, duck, duck, go. Not duck, duck, go. <laughs> Do you, do you know Dr. Go? No, I it's, don't. Uh, okay, so I just say that because, you know, I know you aren't a huge fan of big tech and Google obviously is big tech. Yeah. So so a search engine that you can use alternatively is DuckDuckGo. All right, yeah. And so they, they won't track you and, you know, you won't all of a sudden... They won't, they won't know your, all your secrets. Yeah, you won't suddenly see ads for the for, for the bike anti -Trump. rack that you were, you know, <laughs> or anti-Trump, whatever. Um, but so... I think that the group, I, I'm trying to remember how I came across They might have just paid for like a sponsored ad or something and it popped up um, and then it said, we still need people, we need volunteers. And if you can join in person, that'll be even better than phone banking. And so I went and the thing is the, for, you know, you said for, for young people who want to get involved, like yeah. nowadays there's a lot, there's so many organizations and it's just a matter of like of searching literally like yeah of, of searching um it could be a hashtag or you can just look at one of the political voices that you like and respect on online and then you'll find the work that you can be doing you know and then if you don't feel like getting on the ground and you know doing physical work today i also think that doing things that works within your com your community is a huge it's a huge thing, like writing, like writing to, something or talking, mm -hmm. like actively talking to people in your life um, about these things in a kind and caring and respectful way can make a, a and it can make a huge difference. Yeah. You know, if I just think about my network of friends alone yeah. and all of the different fields that they're in, whether it is somebody who works in venture capital or somebody who works in biotech or law like each of those people are people who are contributing to the way that the system is built. Yeah. And so it can just be a conversation that starts to shift people's perspectives. Yeah, you can uh, you know, just like measure the room and see like, hey, you know, uh, speak your mind and see what people react. And then, you know, if you, if you have some people that uh, support what you say, have um, longer conversations and and try to get organized, try to do more like, yeah, get more people involved. Yeah. And one thing too, and I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, but it's that people feel, a lot of people feel disempowered. Like they don't feel like their words and their actions have any value or yeah. worth. Yeah. And I feel, I think that that is a huge, it's, it's combined with what I was saying about people not researching about their elected officials. Yeah. Um, we feel like nothing that we do matters. Yeah. And so that's why, what is one boycott going to do, right? Yeah. What is, if you, there's a product, let's just say Nike, yeah. right? What is boycotting? What is me not buying the new Yeezys going to do? Um, and I think that that is a huge issue too in our culture is that we think that individual action doesn't mean anything. And yeah. to me, I, I personally think that it means everything. Like that's the only way that we shift the way we the, live. The, the power of uh, consumption, like how you use your, your money, how you spend your money, it's also a political power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just like buy, buy, uh, uh, the, the stuff you buy, the, the, the choices you make with your money. The banks that you use. The banks that you use, like, okay, uh, this bank, you know, loans to uh, Lockheed Martin, which yeah. bombed Syria, so you can say, no, okay, I don't want to use that bank. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so, it's not even, it's all extremely public information, right? Yeah. Like, the type of, uh, this type of stuff that, that Wells Fargo is tied to, is all, it's all public information. It shouldn't, yeah, I just think that it is, um, it's a minor inconvenience for you to have to figure out 
which bank is going to be the most ethical choice for you and what yeah. your needs are. But you um, should try it. But you should try if, it. If you, if, you, if you feel that the world isn't, isn't doing pretty well, then you should try it. Yeah, yeah. And so I what would say- What about tech? That. Big tech, like, uh, okay, so instead of uh, Google, you use DuckDuckGo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what other apps are there? Yeah, are, so interesting. in um, one of the big things that happened recently is that because uh, WhatsApp had, by the, which it was funny because I, for some reason, missed that message, but WhatsApp had the, the message that basically helps people understand what the privacy policy is. And so then uh, people ended up uh, wanting to leave WhatsApp. Yeah. And so a lot of people were trying to find which messenger apps to use. Yeah. And so Signal is Signal. a a really good... I have uh, Signal, but nobody messages me through Signal. Have you? Really? Yeah, well, just with my brother. Just So so what What do people... Is it WhatsApp? Do people still mostly use WhatsApp for uh, you? Yeah, everybody talks to WhatsApp still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. In but, some... Okay, but we still use it with my brother. You know, it's something, something. You know, yeah, still... I'm on Signal. He he All said right. he said he said text me. You should he okay, should have said well, you know I'll, text, I'll text you message through Signal. <laughs> yeah, have, so like now I have two people, my brother and you. Yeah, so Signal is a is a is a good alternative That's for, um, for messages. For messages, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I uh, yeah. There's there's many different. There are many different options, and I think that it's a matter just similar to banks, right? Like yeah. it's about researching what the your needs are, and not just saying, "Well, everybody does this." Like I let let me just continue to do this. Um, yeah, so engaging with your options. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like looking at the different options. Yeah. yeah so yeah. let's talk about. Can we talk about the your 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 podcast, your webpage? Yeah. 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 Because um, I, you told me that, you know, it might be closing. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of sad because I, I just learned about it. I, it's uh, You have information about the Vietnamese community. Yeah. It's about and Vietnamese. Why, why are you closing? Um, I, we're shifting gears. So, so uh, the, the podcast is something that we worked on for the past few years, telling stories from and about Vietnam, talking about all of these different aspects of of from culture, history, food, current events. Um, and um, it's this is, I think, also tied to all of the, the stuff that we were talking about when it comes to living in an age of disinformation and stuff like that. Like, I think that uh, it's important work to tell yeah. stories. Yeah. Um, but one thing that uh, I know myself and a few other members of the team uh, want to make sure we're investing energy and time into is also creating resources beyond just stories to uh, use those resources to have the kind of dialogues that we need to have. Um, and so that's, so it's, I mean, you can think of it as closing or you can think of it as like, it's the new, it's a new era of the kind of work that we have to do in order to um, strengthen a, a knowledge, understanding, and relationships within the wider Vietnamese community. Um, but yeah, so it's it, it's a podcast where we, um, yeah, we 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 talked about all of the different issues um, that were happening, um, yeah, in 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 Vietnam and in the global Vietnamese community. Um, yeah, and then I think that moving forward, something that I I think the heart of that work is going to still be in the work that I'm doing, um, but that the format will be, I think, a little more diverse. So it will, will it will come in the form of uh, dialogues, workshops, um, trainings, all of these different pieces that we need um, in order to shift the way that. Yeah, the shift so shift what, what political type of, conditions. What type of training? Yeah. So who would you train? Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is like all completely brand new. Like we okay. just got we just got the 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 group that I'm working with. Yeah. We just got in, uh, state incorporation like this like a few weeks ago or so, or maybe like two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so the training uh, we uh, on the team, I have a, a few people who are scholars. And so they have a lot of amazing work that they've been working on for over a decade, talking about things like the modern um, 
the modern political um, history of, of the Vietnamese community. Um, uh, some of them are uh, talking about the, the, the sociology side of it, um, um, the complexity of identity and how that impacts the work that we want to do or the relationships that we form. So um, in terms of the training, I think it's all of these different trainings that will help us better understand current political conditions. Um, so you can think of it as like political education and then uh, other training pieces, like some of the work that I do is um, more geared towards like communication and um, you know, what, what in some cases you call leadership training, um, training um, so that you can organize, like uh, manage people, leadership styles, um, conflict resolution, um, but with a, with a organizer spin. Um, like what does that mean for people who are working in uh, repressive environments? So it'll be basically a, the toolkit for what you need to do if you want to shift, shift political conditions in any given place. And is this yeah. for like the Vietnamese communities or, or other people from other countries allowed in, into these uh, workshops? Yeah, I think that um, to start off with, we will have a focus on um, the global Vietnamese community. So Vietnamese people in Vietnam and also Vietnamese people, um, you know, uh, uh, abroad. Um, and then I think over time, as we build alliances, naturally, we will have to have we will have alliances with people from different places, different countries. Um, and so I think depending on the program, I I think that that would be a part of the work that we do as well. So programs that involve people who are not just uh, Vietnamese identifying or, you know, people who work specifically on the, the issues of the global Vietnamese community. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like what, what are the main issues that you think are the most important, like uh, say freedom of speech is one, um, what type of other things are yeah, I mean, uh, we talked, we spent a lot of time talking about it today um, in the Vietnamese community today, globally, the the polarization issue that, that is impacting everyone is yeah. impacting the Vietnamese community okay. in a really major way. So I think- In a negative way. In a really majorly negative way, yeah. And so I think that for the- um, foreseeable future that has to be on the table as something that we talk about. Basically, that's what we were talking about earlier about um, how to depolarize people. How to depolarize people. And at one point, I thought to myself, like, oh, maybe we can just dissect language and have a conversation about how nobody likes to be called a brainwashed, Manu you know, somebody who, exactly. A zombie. Yeah, a manipulated, a, a manipulated zombie. A manipulated zombie. Nobody likes that, right? Can yeah. we just say that? Can we just dissect language and tell, you know, your Trump supporting father that that was hurtful or tell your anti-Trump daughter that that yeah. was hurtful? Like, is that enough? And then, and then I think that as, uh, disinformation and misinformation and malinformation is getting worse and worse. I think that um, there's going to have to be more tactics, right? Like yeah. it's not as simple as like telling yeah. your grandma that the news she's reading. It's not, it's not as simple that, as going, Duh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's. I think that'll be a big part of the work that we have yeah. to do. And by the way, love the work that we were able to achieve with the podcast. But a podcast is not also not going to it's not, solve it's that, not enough. right? It's, it's not, not enough. enough. Um, and so that's a big reason why we do have to think about our resources, our energy and our time and and tr at least try the different methods of, mm -hmm. of adjusting and shifting perspectives. So that's that work. Well, that's that sounds pretty, you know, it's interesting. I think I, I wish we could uh, have that also in Colombia because Colombia is also very polarized. Um, People are like getting tired of like the right wing government because they just make like terrible decisions and they're like so obvious. But there are also people that are not backing down and they just like they're they're they're. I mean, how how else can I say it? They're being manipulated through fear. So I, 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 like, just don't well, tell them to their face. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, you know, like what, what else can you say? Yeah. Like, uh, how would you approach someone that you feel is? Uh, 
being you know like, like fear mongered into voting the wrong way how yeah. would you approach them yeah i i mean this is what would you say like, that's this is literally the work that yeah. we're working on um trying to figure that out figure out how you can facilitate those conversations in a way that's meaningful and and not painful as pain as painless as possible um how about if you hug the person and you say don't be a zombie mm, and you hug them no i don't think that'll work <laughs> i don't think that'll work yeah i well, give them a chocolate huh well, give them a little piece of chocolate <laughs> that will not work no? either a chocolate yeah everybody yeah i mean likes, everybody likes chocolate this the polarization issue is an issue everywhere right yeah. like if you look at like uh, Duterte in the Philippines, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I I remember I was hanging out with somebody, um, a Vietnamese person yeah. who is friends with uh, somebody from the Philippines, and they were they worked together, and she was just explaining to me like why Duterte was an amazing president, why killing um, killing drug dealers uh, and drug users. Drug addicts yeah. um, is is a, a an effect yeah is necessary an effective solution yeah you know like it's like you can't it's how can you argue with that yeah you can't say like listen you're being fear mongered don't listen you know you yeah. can't you you just can't say that like some people um, are too far in yeah some people are just like you know like too far gone I guess y no but I. Yeah. Yeah, there's some people well, they, who are... They agree with killing uh, yeah, drug addicts. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah there like are the... people... We probably have a ton of people like outside of this building who yeah. believe in that. Yeah, it's just... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, to... Or lots of people in in the city of Los Angeles. Yeah. There are so many people who are, who are unhoused, but you also have so many people who... They won't tell you that they hate poor people, yeah. but they... They do. They do. So, yeah. so uh, yeah. anyway, I, I'm not saying it all hope is lost, but I do think that um, hopefully the work that I'm working on with the the, the people, like my really wonderful uh, friends that I'm working on this with, we will start to um, like build up build the language, build up the build up the language, build up the language and the process and the process. To do it, because well, it's not just you, not just not just language. It's also I hope like you do it process. quickly, because <laughs> <laughs> it's getting worse by the day. By every second, every second, that every passes. second, somebody's having uh, thoughts of murdering a drug addict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean everyone is. All of us have to put in some of that work, and then slowly we can, you know, shift things. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well. Um, Uh, if we could go back a little bit to 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 the book, the Mountain Sings, yeah, with uh, Nguyen Fan Fan Gue, <laughs> yeah, you got Mai. it, yeah, I <laughs> ah, got it. Uh, let's just like uh, finish on that note. I I I love the the idea of the book. Congratulations again on your nomination. Thank I can't you. wait till Thank can't you. wait till you win. <laughs> and I hope you become the director of the film. <laughs> Thank you. I'd prefer to act in it. <laughs> Oh, you prefer to okay? Well, you can uh, you can just do the Mel Gibson and, and, and yeah, direct, yeah, yeah. direct yourself. <laughs> um, so there's one last thing about, that I wanted to uh, uh, address, and we kind of skipped over that subject, and it could be like a um, ending on that note. Yeah. Um, so the, the the author of the book she said that her 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 family uh, wished that she would not become a writer. Yeah um why yeah why are they afraid of writers yeah well i'm not i'm not Gwen Fan Gwen Mai, and so i don't know exact i don't know the psychology okay of her family but i think that i've heard similar things about other career paths that are challenging and not just challenging in the fact of what you're doing but also challenging to the world that you live in and the society that you live in so in yeah, I, again, I don't want to speak for her. So I'll just kind of talk about being the implications of being a writer in, in Vietnam um, is that there are a lot of topics that you can't touch about, uh, touch on. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do, then your work will not be seen. And okay. 
In the best case scenario, your work is not seen. In the worst case scenario, you will get in trouble for- Get jailed? Yeah, potentially get jailed, you know, um, get surveilled. Um, and so the fascinating thing about all of that is obviously as an incredible author who's receiving recognition and accolades now, of course, even even state media wants to publish about that, right? But the actual work of being a writer or being a journalist in Vietnam is any anybody who does it will tell you that it is a very difficult decision to make and a very difficult path to follow. So I'm going to assume that that is why her family did not want her to do that. But of course she did it anyway, thank God. And and yeah. we get to benefit from the work that she does. But um, it's- I wonder how, how yeah. her family feels now. Like they're probably proud now, right? Or I got to ask her. Yeah. You definitely. know, I think by the time that I, it was written entirely in English. It's her first novel in English. She, she so usually, her- She usually writes in Vietnamese. She write, usually writes in Vietnamese. And the f story where she wrote the breadth of all of this, these occurrences in Vietnamese history, she wrote about in English. Um, and I don't believe that it's translated to Vietnamese yet. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's and just in English and it might be complicated. No, no, no. It's, tra it's been translated into Italian. It, um, it, uh, oh, okay. It's in Nor it's, it's available. I, I just know the countries. I don't know all of the languages yeah. that it's been translated, but it's available in Italy, in Norway, in India. Um, so it's, you know, it's been translated to a few different languages, but, um, at the time when I spoke to her a while back, like I, uh, I, as I understood, like several of her family members had not even, um, read the story yet, but oh, okay. I'm sure that that's something that she's been working on, but, um, it's a lot of difficult stuff to, to, to dig into. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the stuff is not readily available anywhere actually uh -huh. not available part definitely not available in vietnam but also not really that readily available here in america either so that is probably why <laughs> so um uh yeah on, on, I, I, there's a problem with uh freedom of speech in in, in vietnam right uh like with people that are that say it speak out against the government does it have to do with anything like that now yeah 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 and so it's uh, like I was saying, that like if you are a writer, if you're a journalist, you're gonna have to tread that line. You're gonna, have, or even even music artists. You know, you have really accomplished rappers in Vietnam yeah. who talk about the fact that they have to get creative with the way they talk about things. That, okay, it's just that's an issue that. Yeah, that's an issue that to talk around it. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're very familiar with, you know, repressive, repressive governments and what that the impact that has on creating art, you know, creating art or and, you know, creating art or doing the work of, of journalism, investigating issues. It's just is there yeah. is there a court? for that protects the the these artists in vietnam is there like an international court that they, they maybe appeal to because uh recently in in spain um a, a rapper was arrested for because he, he he um his lyrics talked uh poorly about the the, the king of spain mm -hmm. and his twitter feed also like you know says like a whole bunch of insults of, about the, the king of spain so he was arrested and fined but there's other, also other activists that they, they burned and ripped the, the picture of the, the monarchs, the, the Spanish monarchs. Yeah. And they were also arrested and fined. But uh, international court from Strasbourg ruled in their favor and uh, they ruled that the, the, gov the Spanish government has to uh, repay and um, has to, you know, like, um, how do you say it when they, when you have to... Uh, not, not just repay, but also like uh, fix their mistake with the people that got arrested uh -huh, and uh -huh. and give them like some like, money. Uh huh, <laughs> uh huh. Like, uh huh. Like, like a form of like reparations. Yeah, like, a yeah. reparation. They have to give them a reparation. Um, 
so it, it does help to have like an international court that defends like freedom of speech and these type of uh, human rights. Is that something that the Vietnamese people can do? Yeah. Uh, like the, the, will the government listen to that type of thing? No. 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 no, no. <laughs> they don't believe like. I don't mind. know. Members of the <laughs> Vietnamese government, you can chime in. No, I mean it's <laughs> that it's yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It depends on you know. It depends on the issue, but. Yeah. The, the, if the UN, I mean, this is actually re relatively, this has gone, gone on with a lot of different artists in Vietnam, but if, you know, if the UN says something, then there will be some media buzz around it, yeah. but it's not like the Vietnamese government is going to all of a sudden to, say to like, listen, yeah, they're not going to say, okay, cool, great, yeah. publish your... Yeah. book or yeah. you know publish your, anything that talks bad about us yeah it's <laughs> so yeah i mean there's only uh, this is something i've in in work that i've done surrounding advocacy like i understand the need for it but there are massive limits to it you know mm -hmm. and it's you can it's, it's important to do the work but it's important to do work other than that too because it's not going like again governments whether it's the Vietnamese government or another government, they are not going to necessarily um, care if the UN or another international body tells them that they have to do a certain thing. Yeah. If it's not in their interest. Yeah. Um, yeah. They would have to be like part of, of that the, community, the, yeah. the international community that... Actually, it's they want to be because then it makes it even easier to not have to, like so that the, the, the things that they're saying is not... Um, that they get to have a say in what those international bodies say. Okay. So actually the Vietnamese government just tried to, like, is currently trying to be a part of oh, okay. the UN, like, human rights. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's the, the UN Human Rights Council. I, yeah. I can't remember it entirely, but... Um, so they actually want to change the rules in their favor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, smart, so... Okay, well... Um, is there anything else you would like to say to the listeners uh, about, uh, you know, like your f future projects? Um, no, I think uh, if you would like to follow any of my stuff, I'm... How about the, yeah, your, tell us about your social media. Yeah, you know, I'm people on, can follow you. I'm not particularly, I'm not super active on social media, but you can find me on Twitter, you know, underscore a queen go. Um, so at underscore Quiengo, Instagram at underscore Quiengo. Uh, anytime I, you know, on, on the rare occasion that I write something or do something, it's it's on there. Um, so yeah, you can follow that. Do you have like a blog where you write stuff? I don't, I don't. Okay. I So yeah, the, and the last piece of writing I did was a while a while ago um, in, in the summer, but- um, You did have some articles that you published uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that recent though. It was the piece talking about um, thinking beyond policing. Oh, okay, which yeah. Which is that a conversation was... for another day. Yeah, but, we'll definitely um, have you again because there's lots of uh, stuff to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we'll probably put the links under the video if you want to see the, the um, you know, her articles. We'll put the links also to the podcast, to the Vietnamese Community Podcast and see what goes on, on with uh, that project that you have that sounds really interesting and, and I wish it would uh, expand to other countries. Mm -hmm. Uh We'll keep an eye out for for your 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 prize that you're gonna win soon, <laughs> the audiobook. And, and I can't wait. I, I, I would really like to listen to the book. Uh, it's, we'll put also the the link to the where you can where people can acquire it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll post. Uh, it'll be the link to the Libro FM, which will benefit the local, like a local bookstore of your choice. Yeah. Amazing. Well. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us, and uh, I'll see you next time.